Thanks for tuning in to this live stream. In this live stream, we're gonna talk about my favorite uh, protein bars and protein powders. You know, people ask me these questions all the time. So I made a list of maybe like three of my favorite protein bars and three of my favorite protein powders. But first I wanted to go over exactly like what I consider to be an adequate amount of protein. Like what, what's a good amount of protein to eat every day? And then we're gonna break down these bars. I got a whole bunch of slides and we're gonna go over it in you know pretty good detail. And I think we I think we got a few people in in this live stream. So if the sound is good, if the picture is good, just give me a thumbs up. Also, we're gonna do a big Q and A at the end and during the presentation. You can ask me any questions about fitness, health, weight loss, nutrition, whatever you want to talk about. And also, it's always fun to know where where you're from. You know, when you leave a comment, so it's really interesting to see that people tune in from all over the world, which is really, which is really exciting. Okay, let's get let's get right into it. Let's go into. What are my favorite um, protein bars and protein powders, along with what is an adequate amount of protein to eat every day? And just give me a thumbs up if anyone's out there, just to make sure everything is going going good with this um, live stream. Okay, so this is what I like to say, and I, I talk about this all the time. What I think is like a good amount, um, an adequate amount of protein to eat, is 0.9 grams of protein per pound of lean body weight. And I broke this down for you here so you have an example of it. Let's say you're 150 pounds, right? And you're 20% body fat. That will put you at 120 pounds of like lean body weight. That's minus that's minus your um, body fat. So if you timed 120, 120 pounds by 0 0.9, that leaves you with about 108 grams of protein. And in my opinion, that's about the ideal amount of protein to eat. I think you can even go more. I personally go more. I, I go at least one gram per pound of lean body weight. So I think if you're 150 pounds or 20% body fat, I think you can even go with 120 grams of protein. And I made a little note underneath this. Hey, Krill, uh, thanks. I, wanna, I just want to pull Krill's, Krill's mes message in here just to show how this works. See, if you have any questions, I can pull them right in so we can all like discuss them and learn together. Okay, perfect timing, Mike. Just came home and planning to do mobility stuff. Yeah, I love that mobility work, Krill. Thank. Guess you're going in my uh, <laughs> JBL speaking now. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, Rose is in the room, too. I just want to pull a call. Thanks, Rose, for tuning in. Everything sounds good. Picture's good. I appreciate Rose showing up, too. That's great. Okay. And I made a little note on the bottom of this slide. Just so I give it, have a general idea. If people always ask me, like, how, do we, how do you know how much protein is in foods? About four ounces of chicken, fish, and meat which is maybe like the size of the palm of your hand, I would say, is about 25 grams of protein, an egg, seven, eight grams of protein. And I'm always a big believer in like tracking your calories, your proteins, your fats, your carbs, at least once in your life for a few weeks. I like my fitness pal. You know, my daughter likes chronometer. It's a good idea just to track your calories and proteins and fats, just to get an idea of where you're at, at least once in your life, so you know that when you look at a, a four ounce chicken breast, it's about 25 grams of protein. So I always really, really recommend that. And it's so easy nowadays with your phone and MyFitnessPal is a great thing. Okay, so let's go over my three favorite protein bars. Okay, now I, I picked a combination. The reason why I picked these three is because I wanna give you different protein sources within the bar. Like one bar, this Quest Double Chocolate Chunk, which is great. I mean, I'm gonna break it down. I'll show you pictures up in two. That's, that's made up of a, like a whey protein, a milk and a whey protein isolate. So it comes from milk, comes from dairy. Then I also wanted to pick a bar that was more plant-based. So that's this no cow double chocolate brownie bar. Actually, it tastes pretty good too. I'll, I'll tell you what I think about the taste of these bars too as we go. That's a combination of a brown rice in addition to a pea protein. So it is a complete protein, plant-based plant protein. And then I wanna give someone another option. This is like an egg-based protein bar, which is these RX bars. Chocolate chip is my favorite, and it's pretty much made with egg whites. But we'll break it all down you know, as we go. Okay, so let's first talk about the Quest, the Quest protein bar. And I also have a, have a little love. I wanted to give you the like the label what's on back of it so you can look at it. This is how the bar looks. And this is a protein bar that my wife eats every single day. And I really do like the bar. Let me, let me, let me get you, pull it into the camera. Yeah, this is it. It's the Quest um, protein bar. And this and this is our favorite flavor. It may be a little bit blurry, you know, with it, with it not, not in focus. Okay, let's break this bar down. One of the reasons why I, why I like this bar so much is that it does have 14 grams of fiber in it. So when you look at the um, when you look at the total carbohydrates in this bar, it has 24 grams of carbs, 
but the net carbs in this protein bar is only four net grams. And let me explain to you what, what we talk about net carbs. Net carbs is total carbohydrates minus fiber. So if you took 24 grams of carbohydrates, which is in this bar, and then you minus 14 grams of fiber, that leaves you with 10 net grams of carbohydrates. But what this manufacturer does, what Quest does too, and a lot of people do this, they also subtract that sugar alcohol. Like sugar alcohol is just kind of like, like a, a, an artificial sweetener that they put in, and there's six grams of sugar alcohol. So this bar is considered as four net carbs. Now, why is that important? Some people feel like, say you're on a low-carb diet like me, and you, and you want to minimize how many grams of carbohydrates you're eating and you still wanna get a good amount of fiber, I think this is a good bar. When it comes to people on a ketogenic diet, let's say you're eating like an extremely low carbohydrate diet and your liver is producing ketones from body fat, beta hydroxybutyrate, and you wanna stay in ketosis, you wanna keep your, your carbs down. Some people, like a bar like this, a Quest bar, personally does pop me out of ketosis. It may not you, it just depends. You really have to experiment with it. But some people would consider this a keto bar. I would consider this just a low, a low um, carbohydrate bar. It has 20 grams of protein. It's a combination of milk and whey protein isolate. And I like that it's an isolate. What they mean by isolate is that they strip everything out of it. You're just left with the amino acids. Now they stripped out all the fat. Like it's not a casin. Casin is the other part of the dairy that sometimes if you, if, if sometimes when protein bars say concentrate, that means you're getting the, the casin out of the way. This is, that's why I like an isolate bar because it strips everything out of it so you're just getting the amino acids, just getting the protein. And it's only 180 calories. And I gotta say, it's a very good tasting bar. It's almost a little bit addictive. My wife loves them. I eat them, you know, I eat them occasionally. I also put a little bit of the ingredients down here so you can see it a little bit better. You know, it's sweetened with stevia, which, which I like. It has a little bit of sea salt in it. You know, see the milk protein, the whey protein isolate. It's um, there's some almonds in there, unsweetened chocolate. See, it's interesting. The cocoa though is processed with alkaline, and unfortunately, when they process the cocoa, like the cocoa beans with alkaline, it does strip out some of the polyphenols and some of the like the, the nutrients, some of the good stuff in it. But a lot of manufacturers like to do that because um, dark chocolate is too bitter for most people. But when I'm buying like a chocolate bar, I don't want a, I don't want to process with alkaline because I want all the good flavonoids and all the polyphenols, all the good stuff with it. But I think it's a great tasting bar. So if you if you're not if you have no issues with dairy, and you want a high fiber bar that's low in carbohydrates and has a good amount of protein in it, I think this Quest bar is great. Like when I would would have a bar like this, maybe would be post workout. Like right after workout, I want to make sure I'm getting a good amount of protein. I might eat a Quest bar like this. Plus the fiber keeps you regular too. So I, I think it's a good bar. Okay, let's go to let's go to the next bar, and and we'll talk about. You know, I I, I like the other camera angle better. I'm gonna switch back to this one. Let's talk about the no cow chocolate fudge bar. That's um that's this bar here. I also have a picture of it in the top corner. This is a bar if you don't want to eat dairy. Like if you want like a plant-based protein type bar, I think this is a good choice. Okay, this bar has 210 calories in it, 21 grams of protein, which is great too. There's a lot of protein for a plant-based bar. And it's a combination of brown rice and pea protein. So that is a complete protein. Well, they have all the non-essential amino acids between the brown rice combined with the pea protein. So that's a real good thing. Similar to the Quest bar, it has a good, a reasonable amount of carbs, 23 grams of carbs, but it also has 15 grams of fiber. Very similar to the Quest bar, and only five grams, well not only, but it has five grams of sugar alcohol. So very similar to the Quest bar, how we calculated it, the net carbs on this bar is only three grams. So you might consider this a keto bar, you make it, but definitely I would consider this a low carb bar. Has a reasonable amount of fat, eight grams of fat, Okay, once again, it's also sweetened with monk fruit and stevia, which I think are probably the best natural sweeteners. You know, no calories, similar to like the sugar alcohol. I think it's um, a pretty good tasting bar. I don't think it tastes as good as the Quest. I find that when you have these plant-based type bars, they get 21 grams of protein in them. It's a little bit, in my opinion, a little... I don't know if chalky or powdery would be the word, but it's a little bit like that. I don't mind it. I've been eating these protein bars. You know, you know, I own a gym for like 30 years and I've been 
lifting weights and taking protein supplements and and fooling around with these protein bars for for 40 years. So I'm used to the old one just to be really chalky. This one I think is a pretty good tasting bar, a little bit chalky. The big advantage of this bar is that it's dairy free. See, I, it's very questionable dairy. Um, like if if you would talk to a doc, Dr. Stephen Gundry, you know he believes that um, some some dairy products you shouldn't really eat. There's like this A1 and A2 dairy. He believes that A1 dairy there was a mutation with the cows and it's not good. You only should eat A2 dairy. Also, there is a little bit of research out there saying that um, men who eat dairy every single day, like drink two three glasses of milk every single day, may have a slight elevation elevated risk of getting prostate cancer. Um, you know, I'm lactose intolerant too. I can eat a whey protein isolate, but I can't drink a glass of milk. It upsets my stomach. So if you have issues with dairy, some people also think dairy is somewhat inflammatory. So if you have issues with dairy and you want a good protein bar, I think this no cow is definitely a good option for you. So it's, it's something you want to you want to consider. Okay, let's let's go to the next bar. Now this bar is definitely a little. I'm going to change cameras again. This bar is definitely um, a complete shift. Jake, yes, I agree. I think, think thanks for showing up, V. Thanks, that's true. Right. Let's go over these RX bars. Okay, these RX bars, this is more of like a higher fiber, high fiber type bar. But I wanted to give someone probiotic, yes. But I, I but I wanted to give people an option of like an egg, an egg-based um, bar as well. The nice thing about this bar is the simplicity of it. You know, all it has is three egg whites, right? Six almonds, four cashews, two dates. That's it. Nothing else in the bar. The downside for me is that it's a little high in the carbohydrates and a little high in sugar, but it's natural sugars, you know, coming from the dates and, and things like that. But let's go. It has 210 calories, right? 12 grams of protein. So not as high of a protein part as the other two bars. I would almost consider this bar as like a general like meal replacement or snack replacement type bar. Because it does have a decent amount of carbs, it has 30, 34 grams of carbs, only three grams of fiber, so the net carbs are only thirty one are thirty one grams. So it's a kind of a high carby bar. Eighteen grams of sugar, eight grams of fat, and as you see, only those ingredients. But it does have sometimes when I say natural chocolate flavor, that could be something like a little a little bit artificial in there as well. Let's see how it. So, but overall, I think it's a good bar. It's a great tasting bar. I mean, it tastes great. It tastes very sweet tasting. I would say the only downside of this bar is that it does get stuck to your teeth a little bit. That's what I find. Like these chewy, like the dates in there, that's what everyone says. And I say it to clients. Whenever I recommend this to a client, they say, Mike, it tastes great, but I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flossing my teeth afterwards. It's a little bit sticky, but a great tasting bar, more of a well rounded like meal replacement diet bar, but I definitely would recommend it as well. So those are my three picks. I don't want to go, you know, give you too many, but those are pretty much my three go-to bars when it comes to protein bars. Okay, now let's go over what are some of my favorite protein powders. I think protein powders is a great way, either as a meal replacement, just a, I think definitely for vegetarians. That's why I, I, I picked a hemp seed um, protein powder here too. I find that Vegetarians just do not get enough protein. And I find women too in general don't really eat anywhere near as much protein as men. So I think taking a protein powder um, once a day or every other day I think is a good idea. And I gave you a couple of different choices. First I did collagen. I'm gonna talk a lot about collagen. I give you two different choices for collagen protein powders. Another, uh, just a real good quality whey protein isolate and then a hemp seed protein, which is a complete vegetable protein. And the ones that I went with, this is one of my favorite collagen one, which is called Vital Proteins, just a plain unflavored Primal Kitchen. I love Mark Sesson. He's the he's the you know the founder of that company. I read all his books, you know the Primal Blueprint. He's one of the I say originators of this whole ancestral movement and primal eating and paleo eating, you know, from his early books. But I think he's great. That's his company. I think he sold the company about a year ago, but I think he's still really involved in it. Then I also picked just a, like I say a real good quality whey protein isolate. This is like grass-fed um, pasture-raised cows from, from uh, New Zealand, you know, which is a great place for that. I guess the weather is permitting, you know, is it, 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 very conducive to like feeding these cows, pasture-raising them all, all year round. And then I actually went with the Whole Foods brand of the organic hemp seed. That's a complete protein as well, because I just think the price point is really good for it. And, and you know, I, I, I think I like Whole Foods. I think it is a good, a good supermarket. Okay, so let's go. Let's let's first check out Vital Proteins. 
And once again, I'm also gonna switch. And now let's, let's stay with this camera angle. Let's first talk about collagen protein in general. Now let me switch. See, collagen protein, like most of your body, is made up of like collagen protein, all your connective tissue, the elasticity of your skin, your hair, your nails. And most people do not get enough collagen like within their diet. You know, years ago, I remember my grandparents, like um, when I was a kid, if, well, my grandparents, well, they would have eat a piece of chicken. Not only did they obviously eat like the white and the dark meat of the chicken, they would like gnaw on the ends of the bones, chew on the cartilage, break the bones apart, suck the marrow out of the bones. You know, we just don't do that. We don't eat like, like that now. So we, I don't think we, the average person really gets anywhere near enough collagen within the body. Plus your, your, your levels decline as you age. I think it's somewhat of an anti-aging type supplement thing to take. That's why people are now it's very popular to drink like bone broth because the gelatin is really high in collagen. So if you're not really doing things like that, if you're not drinking bone broth every day, if you're not really gnawing on the ends of, ends of bones and doing things like that, you're probably not getting enough um, enough collagen. Let's see what Gene has to say. Hey Mike, I heard collagen protein is missing. Yes, it's missing tryptophan. I was gonna talk about that. Thanks for bringing it up. Yes, it's that's the only downside of collagen for proteins. It's missing one of the essential amino acids, tryptophan. That's, you know, like in Turkey, you know, it's good for melatonin. Uh, that's why it makes you sleepy. But it's very interesting. There's a couple of ways of looking at it. I, I, I remember hearing Mark Sesson give a little like presentation on collagen because, you know, he manufactured collagen protein. And he looked at it like he thinks it is protein sparing. Look at it like this. L let's say you take a collagen, collagen supplement. This collagen is really going to go to you mostly type 1 and type 2 collagen. It's going to go mostly to your skin, hair, and your nails. A little bit to your joints and your connective tissues, but mostly skin, hair, and nails. So it's going to spare your more complete proteins more for muscle building. That's one way of looking at it. Plus, like for example, sometimes I'll take a collagen, collagen protein powder that's missing that tryptophan, and I may also put a scoop of say hemp seed or whey protein in it to make it a complete protein. But, but let me break this down a, a little bit more. Okay, let's look at these vital proteins. I like the unflavored because it's actually, it dissipates and mixes so well, definitely in hot liquids. Like I have tea here, you, you, you put two scoops, which will be 20 grams of protein in a cup of like hot water, like tea or coffee, it's gonna instantly dissolve. You're barely gonna taste it. Like some people say, oh, I don't taste it at all. I'm not going to take a good quality, like I love Italian roast, French roast coffee in the morning. I'm not going to take a good quality cup of coffee and, and in my opinion, ruin it with two scoops of, of uh, <laughs> collagen protein powder. Plus, I like to fast in the morning anyway. But, uh, you know, but a lot of people do that and they do like it. It will dissolve instantly. Even in cold liquids, it pretty much will dissolve, but you may have to shake it up a little bit. What I like to do is, like for example, say I'm, ha I'm, I'm making myself a post workout shake. I use like celery juice, which I love. I may take two scoops of collagen protein powder and I may do like one scoop of whey protein. I may do one scoop of hemp seed protein to make a complete protein and it dissolves pretty good for sure. Like I said, so two scoops, 20 grams of protein. This is the like the peptides, hydrolyzed, like just like whey protein isolated, stripped of everything. The, you know, the, what they do is, if this is a bovine, meaning that they scrape the hides of cows, collect the cartilage, you know, cut, and then they, they somewhat, they heat it and they press it, they strip everything out of it. And you're just left with say the amino acids in the, the, in the amino acid profile of collagen protein. That's why I call them collagen peptides. And it's type one and type three collagen, which is like I said earlier, is a little more geared to hair, skin and nails. Like I noticed one of the reasons why I started taking this collagen a few years ago, and I do 20 grams a day, 20, 25 grams a day, is I started getting like cracks in my nails that just would not go away. I felt like I was getting these old man nails really upsetting to me. Like I just could not heal them. Within about a month or two of taking 20 grams of collagen protein a day, completely went away. I mean, my nails are as strong as could be. I feel like my hair grows a little faster, my nails grow fast. I mean, I'm 59 years old. I think my skin looks pretty good. There is some research, some studies that say that it kind of like fills in the lines in your skin. You know, women love it, my wife takes it, my wife loves it, a lot of her girlfriends take it. They think it works too. Hey, Carolyn Connors here, cool. Carolyn, hey, Carolyn, how you doing? Thanks for showing up again. I use Vital Proteins Collagen, it's great for joints, yes, hair and nails. I drink it with Amazon a grass green powder. Ooh, the green powder too, great. Hey, it seems like you got it going on, that's great. Nice job, Carolyn, thanks for showing up again. That's great. 
also you know there's even some um there's even one good study i made a, some other videos about collagen protein powder on the youtube channel too talking about how it really is good for tendonitis tendinosis you know those those those, must, those, those tendon type inflammation of the tendons they're taking it was a little bit of larger doses i think 25 to 40 grams of collagen protein powder really helped that mark sesson talks about that he had a chronic achilles tendon tendonitis and um nothing would nothing would heal it he was almost gonna get an operation then he started taking 40 grams of collagen protein powder every single day for a couple of months and he thinks his tendonitis completely went away i've tr i've experimented with 40 grams that's a little excessive for me i can't consume that much of the collagen powder at least not at one sitting i like like two scoops of this is ideal for me maybe i'll do one more scoop on some days but typically i find um 20 grams but there's also another type of collagen too which i didn't i didn't you know bring up in this video is this type 2 collagen type 2 collagen is a little more geared to for like osteoarthritis and things like that and that comes from either marine sources or comes from like sternums of chickens like they grind it up and they turn it into a supplement and you take that so there are some I didn't want to do that with this because this supplement in my opinion is more for skin hair and nails and maybe even a little bit of connective tissue too like tendonitis and things like that. If you want to take like a collagen supp supplement specifically for arthritis and prevention, you may want to take a type two. And there are some brands that combine all three, but they get much more expensive. And uh, you know, I, I'd rather split it up and then just take maybe a type two type supplement. Plus some people say that type two supplements kind of upset their stomach a little bit. I, I, I've taken it in the past, I haven't done it in a while. But this is one of my favorite brands, Vital Proteins. They're all over, you can get them just about anywhere. And just as like, you know, I also put a link you know, below this video in the description where it'll take you to like an Amazon page. I became an Amazon influencer now where I can kind of recommend products and I make like a small commission. You know, you know, helps support the channel a little bit. Let's see what Gene's got here. Hey Mike, I'm continuing my weight loss, but I fear the holidays, dinners, parties might set me back a lot. Any advice? Yeah, I know. This is what I would say. I think you have to enjoy yourself during the holidays. I mean, hey, you want to be your family and friends. You want to have fun. I do love, though, the intimate fasting and, like, the old mat approach when it comes to the holiday. Just like I talked about on the last live stream, like, I, I, I'm going into the holiday that as of Thanksgiving, three pounds lighter because I went into ketosis. I ate that very low-carb diet for a couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm, I may gain the pound back already, you know, but I'm, I'm already having an advantage. I love the ideas of, like, when it comes to, like, say you, say you know you're going out to a party or something, say on a Thursday night. I think you can just got to cut back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, kind of maybe maybe you want to do an OMAD or a TUMAD, you know, those days. Maybe you want to reduce your calories. And then when you, when it's time to go out, you do whatever you want. You have fun, right? Like a Christmas Eve day, I'm going to fast all day. I'm going to eat whatever I want for three, four hours, a big feast. Christmas Day too, we generally go to my wife's family. I'm not going to eat anything. You know, we drive out to Long Island. I get up. I'll just have one big feast, meal, two, three hours. I would incorporate the intermittent fasting, but I do think it's a good... A good thing to do is to eat the foods you want, get it out of your system, enjoy time with your family and friends. That's so important, especially with this pandemic. Hopefully, this may be somewhat of a little bit of a more the a fresh normal holiday season in a couple of years, but maybe not. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. Either use me meal like Christmas and then fast for the whole day. I agree. Love it. I think that's the way to go. I, I totally agree. This intermittent fasting, I think, is such a great thing to do, and it works so well. You know, during the holidays for sure. Okay, let's let's move on to the next one. Okay. Like yes, 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 we like a liar for sure. Okay, we'll keep this angle. I also wanted to give you like a flavored version of this collagen um, collagen protein. This thing tastes so incredibly good. I have to say, this is the uh, you know I have it right here. This is also Mark Sesson's brand from Primal Kitchen. This one, like one scoop, is seventy calories gives you 11 um, grams of protein, you know, obviously mostly all collagen, two grams of carbs, gives you a little bit of fiber, 2.5 grams of fat, same type of um, collagen protein f as the uh, vital protein, bovine, you know, scraping from the back of the hides of cows, you know, grass fed, grass, grass fed, it seems like most of this protein comes from Brazil, I think there's a lot of um, pasture raised um, cattle farmers in Brazil, when I did a little bit of research, I almost thought about opening up a protein um, supplement company. I still might do it one day. I did a lot of research about a year ago, really, really deep, a deep dive into it. It seems like when it, when it comes to getting collagen, most people, most manufacturers do get it from Brazil. And I find that the better quality, like if you bought like a very cheap or inexpensive type of collagen, I think the biggest issue with it is that it just doesn't dissolve 
as quickly or as easily as like these brands do. But I have to say this brand almost tastes too good. <laughs> like if you just want to like at night you want to sip on, you know, after dinner have a little treat or something and you want to sip on like a, an incredibly great tasting chocolate. I even have the, this is chocolate coconut. There's a vanilla coconut, which I do too. That's what I, what I was drinking that last night when I was like setting up this whole video. It tastes incredible. For me though, since I eat such a low carb type diet, I find this to be a little on the sweet side. I think most people would love it because he, he, he sweetens it with monk fruit, which I think is the best sweetener. And it almost has like a foamy brothing type um, flavor to it. This is something that I personally love in just hot water. I'll put one or two scoops in. It almost tastes, like I'm saying, it almost tastes too good. But I definitely recommend it. I think, I think you'll love it. And it has all these, you know, like they put all this stuff on it. And this is why, like keto friendly because it's obviously extremely low carb, non-GMO, no dairy, you know, sugar, you know, low in sugar, all that type of stuff. I, I think you'll love it. It's a little bit more expensive than the vital proteins. Um, I think I figure what price point this is at. I think it's, it's kind of expensive, maybe something like $35, $40, dollars, but sometimes you find it on sale. But I think it's a I think it's a great tasting product. And I just trust um, Mark Sesson. He he puts out such good good products in general. I mean I love all, all his supplements. I I was taking um his his multivitamin for years and then I switched to something a little bit less expensive because it's so expensive. But I I I love his stuff. Okay, let, let's go to the next one. Let's go to, I also want to give everyone just, you know, an idea of like what a really good quality whey protein isolate is. And this is a great brand. This brand comes from, um, comes from New Zealand. Am I pronouncing this right? Opportuni Opportunitas? I don't even know how to pronounce that. This is a, a whey protein isolate. So not a concentrate, just the isolate. Everything stripped out of it. Two scoops of protein, 120 calories. This dissolves really easy. I find this is, sometimes they run out of this. I think it's in, on Amazon now, but sometimes they actually run out of it because I, I think it's somewhat small batch. I think it's a family-owned company, grass-fed, grass-finished. See, see the ingredients: whey protein powder, isolate. There's all that's in it. You know, I I I also like the flavored ones too. Like Mark Sesson, Primal Kitchen makes a really good you know, vanilla and chocolate, you know, whey protein isolate as well. But I would kind of stay away from the concentrates. I find the concentrates are the cheaper forms of this protein, of the protein powders. It's gonna have the fat, all the issues when it comes to protein powder, like the bad stuff is gonna be in the fat part of the protein. But the fact that it's a whey protein isolate and everything is stripped out of it, you can almost argue and almost say that you may not even need to go with, um, grass fed, grass finished because everything is stripped out of it. But it's good, you know, I, I just find it that, that that it's just more humane and, and and the animals are treated well when you do these pasture raised type, um, you know, uh, farms and things like that. I, I like the whey protein isolate and I do go, go with grass fed, grass finished. This one also too dissolves really well. Two scoops, 28 grams of protein, which is great. So it's like eating four, five ounces of chicken, fish and meat. And you're getting no fat, you're getting all the essential amino acids. Obviously, whey protein is a complete protein. And we talked about before that collagen isn't. So yeah, that's the only negative thing that collagen. That, that don't make that your only source of protein. You know, if you're doing a powder every now and then do a whey, or like we're talking about later, we're gonna do the hemp seed. Let me blow this up too. Maybe I'm missing anything when it comes to see how here are all the, all the essential amino acids. So it lists it. And see, it's such a short ingredient list, which is nice. Just whey protein. Isolate, and I find that even though I'm lactose intolerant, I have no issue digesting whey. I can easily do a whey protein isolate; doesn't upset my stomach. But if I drank a glass of milk, would kill my stomach. So this is good. You know, bodybuilders are into into whey protein because it has it's very high in like the muscle building amino acid, which is leucine, one of the essential amino acids. It really, you know, it seems like a lot of studies show that people who consume a lot of leucine um, helps them put on muscle. So. That's why whey protein is so popular. Plus, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty affordable whey protein. Okay, let's go to like a plant-based one too. I want to give you an option for plant-based as well. Let's go back to this back. I like this camera better. Okay, this is um a hemp seed protein. It's interesting. Uh, hemp seed protein, I like it because it also has a little bit of the good healthy fats in it. It is a complete protein. Just like pea protein also is a complete plant protein plant protein, but I find pea protein, I don't think it tastes too good. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, it just, I'm not crazy about it. I find the hemp seed to be 
you know, the, the mix a little bit easier, taste a little bit better. But I have to say any of these like plant-based proteins, when you mix them up in like a cold glass of water, they're gonna be a little grainy, they're gonna be a little powdery. They're not gonna dissolve like a collagen, which is just totally dissolved. They're not gonna dissolve like a whey protein. You're gonna taste it a little bit. Some people cook with that, with this way. You know, I, I generally like to mix it with, um, you know, with that, with that celery juice to dissipate. It doesn't, it doesn't have much flavor to it. It has a little bit of a taste to it, but it's not like you're going to know you're having a plant-based protein powder when you do it. It's not like the whale and not like the collagen. Uh, and, and there are a number of brands out there, very affordable, um, a hemp seed protein, like for example, four tablespoons. They don't give you, oh, let me say, let me say this too. The collagen one, like Vital Proteins comes with a scooper. The other one, whey protein comes with a scooper. This does not come with a scooper for some reason. Maybe that's why, um, it's a teeny bit cheaper, who knows. 110 calories for four tablespoons. You get 15 grams of protein, eight grams of carbs. It's interesting, this said five, eight grams of fiber, but I think they're soluble and insoluble fiber. I think they're counting them both. Typically when I look at the back of the container, it doesn't say um, that much fiber, but this was on this label, so I just went with it. And the only ingredient in it is organic hemp seed. Oh, let's this. Oh, Gene, hey, hey, thanks for the super chat, Gene. You know, Gene was the first person to ever give me a super chat when I did one of these lives a few weeks ago, so I really appreciate it. Okay, what exercise, let me answer Gene's question, then we'll go back to this uh, hemp seed. Um, what exercise would you recommend to strength, oh, the lower back, you know, that's a tough one, Gene, the lower, not that it's tough, but I hope you're not saying that because your lower back is bothering you, okay? I would, I, you know, I really love Stuart McGill the big three exercise for strengthening your lower back. In the case, the first one I would say, I would just do a, fl a front plank. You know, when you plank on your hands, elbows and toes, just hold that, right? Then I love rolling planks where you roll to your side. And that would be another stupid go where you roll to your side. Then the other one is the bird dog. When you're on your hands and knees, you lift one right arm, like opposing left, right leg. And then also a partial sit-up. Stu McGill talks about how you put your hand behind your lower back and just slightly elevate your head and shoulders off the mat. You know, I have some other videos on the YouTube channel that I'll link to you after this, but I would Google Stuart McGill, the big three. He's the expert on lower back and strengthening your lower back. But if your back's feeling good, I mean, I love Romanian deadlifts. I love RDLs, you know, with a lightweight, with a flat back. You know, fireman carries, you know, it hits the quadrillion bone really well when you hold the weight and just like a suitcase carry, you hold the weight in one hand, perfect posture. You walk back, forward and back, hits quadrillion bone on the other side. You, know, you really want to hit, just hit the, all the core muscles. I just, just, just be careful, don't load your back with a lot of weight in extreme flexion or extension. That's the stuff I would worry about, but there's so many great things. And just generally walking is an incredible thing to do for your lower back to strengthen your back. I mean, it hits all those deep muscles, multifidus, longissimus costalis, hits all those deep spinal erectors, and it hits all the deep muscles in your back. So there's a lot of things we can do. You know, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i do a whole video. If you want, we'll do a whole live on lower back exercises. But, but I do have some videos on the YouTube channel already on that. Let's see if I missed anything. Okay, so Carolyn, I added hemp seeds to a lot of my vegetables and protein drinks at Added, yeah, no, I think it's a great thing. It's a great complete protein. It, you know, it's a great way. Plus, the nice thing is it's so high in fiber. I don't think it's quite eight grams. I'm gonna say it's more about six grams for um, for 100 calories. But I think it's a great way to get some of those omega threes. They get to get some fiber to increase the protein. I think it's a great thing to do. Definitely. Let's see. Go back to the exercise. Bird dog side planks. Yeah, I think they're both great. I agree. Great, great movements. Regular planks. Curl up. Yeah, curl up never like, you know, it depends how high you go. Like Stuart McGill has, this is Stuart McGill's philosophy. He thinks that most people who have back, who have like a disc issue, back pain, have a posterior herniation. You know, there's the vertebrae and then there's a little jelly disc, disc in between the vertebrae. He thinks most people have a protrusion or a bulge or a herniation posteriorly. So he thinks that if you're constantly doing like an abdominal curl or you go in a ball and you do one of those abdominal curls, you go into like extreme flexion, you're gonna be pinching the front of the disc, pushing that jelly, pushing you know the material further out and it could lead to an issue. So what he likes to do when it comes to doing a curl up, he uses like a modified curl up. You know, he'll, you lay on your back, bend your knees, keep your feet flat on the floor. Then he recommends you take both hands, you put them on the lower back, and then just do a slight partial curl up. It's much harder than you think. 
it's it's a hard exercise to actually do. You're really engaging the whole anterior side, you know, of your midsection, but you're still keeping that normal curvature in your lower back, so you're not putting any like negative pressure on your lower discs in the, in the lumbar area. I, I do the movement all the time, I think it's great. Some people are funny, have a hard time internally rotating their shoulders and getting their hands in that position. You know, that could be one of the issues. Another issue people have is that they don't have that strength, that, that, that anterior strength in their neck. That they're, like they're, there are other weak links with that movement. It could be your front of your neck, it could be not having the, the mobility in your shoulders. But initially you can even alleviate that when you just do front planks like side planks and um, bird dogs. But I know Gene, in your, in your particular case, I know you have a lot of work, a weight to lose. I think just walking, I'd love to see you walking 10 minutes three times a day or just walking constantly. I think that's one of the best things you can do for your health and for your lower back as well. Let's see what we got here. Strengthening the hamstrings, illegal psoas, yes, psoas stretch. I think it's another great, great thing to do for your lower back. Kneeling position, I think that's a great movement. Let's see. Um, let's see what you need. Okay, money advice for the lower back. Oh, thank Glute bridge, yes. I, I forgot the glute bridge is a great one too. Thanks, girl. That's a really good one. Yeah, walking. I think, yeah, the bridge, like the hip. Some people call them, call them the hip thrust. That's the like the modern term for like doing a bridge. I think the hip thrusts are great. I do that all the time. I like going, you can even go into a, um, into a hip thrust to a bridge. And then you can lift one leg off the ground, you know, and get a little bit of a rotation challenge, which is kind of cool too. I think there's a great movement. And walking, yes, that's great. Okay, yeah, so let's go back to the hem seat. Yeah, so I, 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 think, I think it's great. Let me, let me show you a big, big picture. I think they changed, I couldn't find a new picture, but this is how it looks now. This is the 360, this is the Whole Food brand. I think it's great. And these are my go-to. I have to say out of all the supplements, you know, you know, creatine is a whole thing. We can talk about creatine if you want, but uh, out of all, like just taking supplements in general, I always think, you know, I think a multivitamin is a good thing to take, just a general basic multivitamin. And I think supplementing your diet, you know, with a little bit of protein powder or maybe a protein bar here, I think it is a good thing because most people, I don't think, get enough protein. You know, there's the thermic effect of protein, right? Every 100 calories you eat, you're gonna burn up 25, 30% of those calories you're digesting the protein. It's very satisfying. You know, sometimes you, one of these protein bars are pretty satisfying, even a protein shake, pretty satisfying, you know? And most people, I mean, there's that whole concept of, I think it's called the protein leverage hypothesis, stating that a lot of people who are hungry all the time, the reason why they're hungry is because they're not consuming enough protein. Like some, some researchers feel that you're gonna keep on eating until you reach your protein requirement. And I think when most people come to me and I break down their diet, most people are just not eating enough protein in my opinion. They're obviously they're eating too many carbs and things like that, but I definitely think getting that 0 0.9 grams per pound of lean body weight is a good move, you know, for sure. Let's see what Gene says. Yes, I totally agree, Carol. Women generally do not eat enough protein, more so than men. Men definitely eat a little bit more, but even men don't eat enough either, but, either, but women, Definitely, I don't think eat you know eat enough protein, All right? So let's see. Okay, let's go to um, let's go to a Q and A. I, I got to say, I went through this a little faster than I thought. I thought it was gonna take me, it took me a long time to set this up. Like looking up, I guess it was I saw my setup looking up, you know, finding all the labels, taking pictures of the labels. You know, I I, I had to buy a new chocolate one of these. I wanted to, you know the, to uh, to have it here. And I'm curious from from everyone out there, uh, uh, what are your favorite? Um, protein bars or protein supplements that you're taking. You're taking anything that I missed that you have a favorite bar that you love? I know my, my son likes those. I think they're called Fink. I'm not, I wasn't familiar with them, so, so I didn't want to um, I didn't want to pull it up. I only, only wanted to recommend you know, protein bars and protein powders that I personally have been taking for a long time and that I know really well that don't upset my stomach. Are there, are there any ones that are really good that I missed out there? Also, if you have any other questions, fitness, health, weight loss, I mean, I guess this is one of the first live streams that I did where I'm talking about products as opposed to going straight up information. So I just also want to get an idea, obviously, like I'm always asking what everyone's looking for. Okay, I need a great, I need a great protein bar recommend, recommendation. Okay, Kelly, did, did you see the ones that I went through? Like I went through, I and mean, maybe you, you missed the beginning. So first one I recommend was the Quest Protein Bar. This is a whey protein isolate. Really like it, tastes great. High in fiber, low in net carbs. 
The second one was a dairy-free one. This this is, has like a pea pro no, this has a, a pea protein, right? And a brown rice protein. Once again, to really high in fiber, 15 grams of fiber, low in net carbs. And then the last one, I don't know if I would cl classify this as a, as a compl as a uh, protein bar, more of a meal replacement type bar. Tw 12 grams of protein. This is that egg white, the RX bar. Mm. You know, I, I, I think it's really good. I mean, that's a little too carby for me. So the only time I will personally will have like an RX bar is say I know, like, like say I just worked out and I felt like a little flat. Like I know that I've been cutting back on my carbs pretty aggressively and I just want to, you know, fill up my like my, my muscle with a little, little glycogen or something like that. I'll, I'll have a, uh, an RX bar. And sometimes good. Sometimes you need the dates. Like, like say you're a little constipated, you want to flush yourself out. Sometimes I'll do a, an RX bar. You know, for something like that too, and and actually, you know, like I talk about my kids all the time. Both my son and daughter are both um, runners. They're great runners. They both run in high school. My son runs in college. Besides those think bars, you know, these are good higher carb bars for like runners and things like that. He's not a fat burner. You know, my you know both my kids are carb burners, so you know, may go with a bar like that. All right. So, any other questions, guys? I guess I went through this a little quicker than I thought. I think we only got a couple people left in the room. Any questions? Fitness, health, weight loss at all? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I put a link below. You know, like I said, I became. It's hard to get accepted. I'm so excited I got accepted. I got accepted as something called an Amazon influencer. So since I have a little bit of a following on um, YouTube, they accepted me in their program. So now I can recommend some products. I even have some review videos on Amazon. You can click the. If you click that link, it's going to take you to my like storefront page, and I listed like all the protein powders that I like and all the. Um, and all the uh, protein bars that I like. So it's easier if, if, if you want to check them out and order them off of Amazon. Let's see what you got. Okay. Oh, you just go oh, good. Just looked up Stoop McGill Big Three. It looks very interesting. I will try it. Also, my back is a bit better since I lost 30 pounds. That's great. I still have 60 pounds to lose. I suppose I can only, yes, it would help. And I like Stoop McGill. I actually spoke to him on the phone. I read all his textbooks. He, I think he's great. He's like a world renowned expert. He's based in Canada, he's a professor. He's, he's retired now, but he's still very active when it comes to, you know, dealing with clients and helping people with lower back pain. He takes that real biomechanical approach to back pain. You know, he, he has the, I, I, his last book, which was a wonderful book. He puts you through a whole evaluation and he'll tell you where he thinks your issue is. Like, where's the instability? Where's the weakness? And you can gear the program a little more specific to you, but you can't go wrong just doing the big three, I think, or just walking. Um, but I think he's a top guy. I, I really like everything he does. Let's see. Yeah, so I guess V, v is, is familiar with Stu McGill. He's great. He's great. He is good too. And then I'm also a big believer in just the uh, the mind body connection too. Like I also think that you know if if is you know sometimes a couple different things when it comes to like maybe a chronic pain you're feeling sometimes it can actually even be healed. And you can actually still feel the pain, which is kind of weird. That's why I like mobility movement. Sometimes you have to prove the essential nervous system that the injury has been healed and that it's okay to move in these positions. Because sometimes pain is not necessarily an indicator that there's something wrong, that the problem that could be wrong. I'm also a believer in Dr. Just, Dr. John Stone or TMS, tension minor nerve syndrome where like repressed emotions can cause pain too. But that's, I know I know some people think I'm a little cookie to believe in that, but I think there's something to it too. But I would first start with like the Stuart McGill, the biomechanical approach for sure. Let's see what Quill's got, okay. Whatever collagen product Sandra Bullock is using is the best. I, I, I wonder what she is, she looks great. I wonder what she is doing. I know um the girl from Friends is one of the advertisers for uh, Vital Proteins. I forget, what is that? I forget Jennifer Aniston, is that her name I think? Let's see. Using it bed. Just saw a new movie. She's 58. Yeah, it doesn't look old enough. 40. No, she looks great. I think, you know, I, I think all the all these celebrities are taking this um, collagen protein. But I think, I really do think there's something in it. You know, just the fact that my nails cleared up so quick. And I think, I think my skin maybe look a little bit better. My wife thinks it definitely helps her. And some of her girlfriends have told her that it helps. A number of my client clients are, are on it. I think it's a good thing, this collagen protein. Unless, I mean, bone broth is great too. I find the bone broth to be so much more expensive. You know, I, I think what, I think Krill and Fire is like the most popular brand that all these like biohackers and, 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 and everyone is, is taking, but it's real expensive, you know, I find. I find, um, and I don't really find the, the bone broth taste to be that interesting. It's such a flat, bland type taste, whereas i much rather just have a, um, a, a collagen protein powder and do it that way. I like Rose is here, hey Rose. 
Other than Quest Chocolate Chunk, do you recommend any other flavors? You know, it's interesting. The reason why I like the Quest Chocolate Chunk, and I actually got this from Dr. Stephen Gundry, and he talked about it in his book, The Plant Paradox, because he recommends the Quest Bar then, is the ingredient list is one of the smallest on the back of the Quest chocolate chunk and I'll again let me let me let me pull it up for you here so when you look at the label here there's not much oh no that's the label I think that was on the other slide let me see I don't know if I have it here here's on this slide see the ink the, the, the ingredient list is very small but sometimes when you pick up some of the other flavors like the cookie dough or say one of the other flavors this list expands of ingredients dramatically twice as big so I think there's more artificial things in some of the other flavors. So I would say when you're looking at the Quest bars, look for the small ingredient list. So I think they may put a little more sugar, alcohol, some other things in some of the other Quest bars. That's why, but first of all, I'm a chocolate guy, so I like the chocolate, chocolate. But that's why I went with the um, with the with the uh, the uh, chocolate chunk when it came to the Quest bars. Let's see what Krill's got here. Okay, keep posting, Gene. Let us know. Yes, I, I agree. Definitely. Good genetics. Yeah, yes, yes. Drink exclusively sunscreen. Yes, I'm, I'm sure she, <laughs> I'm sure she's doing all that, right? She's probably drinking green drinks. She's working out all the time. Probably got a lot of nutritionist. Yes, she's doing a lot of th things too. Yeah, it's funny because I, 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 I've, I've taken a lot of those green, green drinks on and off. I, I used to take, um, which I liked a lot, green vibrance. I don't know which one you're taking, Carol. I was taking green vibrance for a while. It has like everything in it. Sometimes I take spirulina, I'll put a couple of spooks and scoops in that. And I haven't tried it yet, but everyone is really into athletic greens, which is very similar to green vibrant. It's really expensive though, athletic greens. I know a lot of the biohackers taking it. I, I, I'm always bringing up Peter Atier. I know he takes it. The other guy I really like it. That's you know that's the Harvard doctor, longevity doctor. His podcast is the drive, which I love. Um, Andrew Huberman, Huberman Labs. He takes athletic greens. But I, I've looked at, I kind of compare them just online compared to Green Vibrance. And Green Vibrance to me was almost half the price. And it had even higher quantities. Like something about Athletic Greens, they have more of a proprietary blend. I mean, they don't really disclose exactly um, the amounts of like spirulina, like the amounts of the stuff they're putting in there. But, but everyone loves Athletic Greens. And I have a number of clients of mine who take it, they love it. Maybe there's something in there that I'm missing or maybe there's something more special about it than um, something like a Green Vibrant or something like that. But I already spent so much money on all these supplements and things that, that I don't know if I wanna spend another 100,000 a month on Athletic, on athletic Greens. But who knows, maybe I will one day. Let's see, Amazing Grass, yeah, definitely, I see it. I will thank a great gene. Cool. Okay. So we can go in 59 minutes. I'd like to go like an hour. There's any other questions anyone has about anything? Let me give you a couple of minutes in case. Um, sometimes it takes, unfortunately, like takes two minutes before these questions to um to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me talk about some of the, just to fill in, fill in the last 10 minutes. I also, um, did a couple of reviews on a multivitamin taking. You know what multivitamin I like? I take a live um, ultra potency, uh, like plus 50 for men over 50. I think that's a good vitamin. So for the price point, I think it's a great multivitamin. One of the things I like about it is that it has a lot of, um, like we're talking about the greens, that's what reminded me of this. It has a lot of like orchard fruits and vegetables, like dehydrated, like powdered fruits and vegetables, like within that multivitamin. This one particular one is geared a little bit towards older men, meaning that whenever you see a vitamin that says for men 50 and over, there's always something in there for your prostate. Like, you know, they put, you know, like, like um, t you know, you know, tomato ex extract, things like that. There's something, there's always a cardio, a heart blend, something for your cardiovascular system, something as anti-inflammatory. That So I, I kind of like that vitamin. They make one for women too, women over 50, and just a normal one every day for men and women. Um, you know, under 50 as well. One one thing I like about that particular vitamin too is that it has the natural form. That's one of the main things I look for when I look for vitamin, for multivitamin. I don't want to take folic acid, the synthetic form. I want the natural form, which is folate. So it does have folate in it, which I like. It is an ultra potency. So it's, I, I like a high vitamin B type multivitamin. Um, you know, vitamin B is water soluble, so you don't have to worry about taking too much of it. That's why you urinate yellow, you know, when you're taking high, high amounts of vitamin B. So, so I, I like that vitamin. That's one I like. Another one I like is um, is Thorn Basic 2 a day. 
It's a little bit more expensive. Uh, you can't just get that in the supermarket, Thorn. You have to order it online or you have to go to a place where there's a registered like nutritionist there. I think it's a great great brand of supplement and and and, and um, multivitamin to work called Thorn, basic two a day. I really like those. And I like to rotate. You know, I'll do that alive um, multi for like maybe this this is this a one pill sixty. So I'll do it for two months and I'll do basic basic thorn basic two a day for a month. I like to mix it up a little bit too. Let's see what Jean's got. Good genetic diet. Um, don't smoke, drink excessively, sunscreen. Yeah, I know, I'm sure. I'm sure that's why what keeps it looking great. Thank you. Amazing. Oh, that's the name of the you take? Amazing grass. That's what you take. Is that, that's the brand you use. I'll have to check that out. I think I've heard of that one, Amazing Grass. I have to check that one out. I'm assuming it's all greens if it's grass. Probably has wheat grass and things like that. I used to do shots of wheat grass. It's interesting. I used to, I, my son. He knows a black belt. He's like a junior black belt. I used to take him to karate like two, two, three days a week and watch every class. I loved it. And one of the other kids in this class, this kid's mother was a nutritionist. And we would talk about nutrition and debate the different things. And she used to make fun of me for taking um, shots of wheatgrass. She said, Mike, you know, you don't digest wheatgrass. You know, you're not a cow. You know, you don't, you don't digest wheatgrass. It, it's like you're wasting your money. And I looked at it and there were some videos on it. But I know some people do feel that it still is like... It's still a good thing to take, you know. It's like pulls it pulls metals out of the body. Um, I don't know, you know. Sometimes um, it's not one of the ingredients I necessarily l like look for when it comes to those green drinks. I like, you know, spirulina, chlorella. I used to take. I, I may take those separately as well too. That kind of like pulls the metals out of the body, which I think is a good thing too. Let's see. I think my daughter Carrot introduced me to it. The bodybuilder daughter, oh, that's great. I know you own a gym, guys. I'm sure, I'm sure your family's in all top shape. I was telling you, oh, that's great. I would, I would love to have her ch jump in on one of these live streams. You know, that would be great. Really cool. Let's talk about some other supplements I'm taking. You know what I'm, I also take? I also take uh, that Carlson's fish oil. You know, I want to make sure I'm getting enough of my omega, my, my omega-3s. You know, so I do that. I do about a tablespoon of that Carlson's fish oil almost every day. But I did read something interesting, like Peter Atia. Like I always say, you definitely should subscribe to his free newsletter. He did a um, a newsletter article on fish oil a couple of weeks ago, and he made a little bit of a correlation that people who have AFib, you know, um, irregular heartbeat, who take high doses of fish oil supplements may have a little more of an issue with it. I have to look into that a little bit more, but I, I've heard other, so many other people really recommend it. I, I like the idea of, of getting... Um, a good amount of omega-3 fish oil, even though I eat sardines almost every single day. Like if I ever do miss sardines, I eat fish almost every single day. If I ever miss a serving of fish, I definitely will make sure I take my omega-3 uh, fish oil. Let me think what other supplements I'm taking. I'm also taking a little bit of um, magnesium citrate. I like to take that. I take between two to 400 milligrams of magnesium citrate every single day. You know, it's hard to get enough magnesium in your diet. So I like to do that. Plus two, you know, it pulls a little bit of water in your coal and gets rid of constipation and, and like that. That's why I like magnesium, magnesium citrate. Um, otherwise, like I said, the spirulina and the chlorella, I'm doing that. I do one of those, um, it's called Evolution brand of celery juice. And all it is is celery juice is 35 calories. You know, it's, if you juice it yourself, you're probably juicing like a whole bushel of celery juice. I like to do one of those every single day to make sure I'm getting enough potassium. I have to say celery juice, besides tomato juice, tomato juice is very similar too, but not like V8, which is high in sodium. It's, uh, tomato juice, there's, there's a brand called Berry Veggie, which I really like, and celery juice for the amount of calories, like for 30, 40 calories, you get like a thousand milligrams of potassium. And the adequate intake of potassium is 4,700 milligrams in a day. Most people don't come near. Just think of banana. 100 calories, maybe 400 milligrams of potassium. Like you can't even compare a banana to like 16 ounces of celery juice. So, you know, the celery juice is like a third, a quarter of the calories, triple the potassium. So those are things I like to eat like regularly. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, different magnesium. Yes, I know there's so many different, it's, magnesium could be confused. There were so many different types of magnesium. You know, uh, you know, I'm not even you know familiar with all the different types of them. I've always liked like the magnesium citrate; it always worked well for me. But yes, there's so many different types of magnesium out there. Let's see. Uh, oh, you love celery juice too, um, with sticks of nut butters. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I think that's a great, great celery juice. Is, it's interesting. I think a celery stick 
is almost when it comes to like calories is almost neutral meaning that like if you the, the energy you're going to exert just chewing and swallowing and digesting celery sticks it's almost like free calories you know it's like fiber potassium and water you know it's really great it's, you know i think celery sticks is great see i love uh i love guacamole even though i eat an avocado almost every single day I also love uh, I love guacamole, but the thing what, what gets you with the guacamole is how you dip it and what you're doing it. But if you guacamole with a celery stick, can't go wrong. Even every now and then I'll do I'll do a carrot, but sometimes I don't, don't even want the sugar of the carrots. But that's true. Let's see, um, Mike, you've never seen Doctor I seven minutes morning workout? No, I don't think I have. If you're on YouTube, it seems something that combined with side planks could be effective flow. I'll check it out. Yeah, I, I, um, no, I've, I've never, I have to say, obviously I know who Dr. Oz is. I've only seen his TV show maybe once or twice, maybe because of the time I'm always working during the day. But I'll definitely will check it out. I'll check it out. Let's see, okay. I should give celery a chance. I eat one banana a day for, you know, definitely, V. I would switch if you can. I mean, you can just do both, but to me, a banana is 100 calories, like 25, almost all carbs, 25 grams of carbs, only 400 milligrams of potassium. So a glass of celery juice, and I'd buy that, I mean, you may not get them in, 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 I know where you are, but actually Starbucks bought this Evolutions brand, it's called um, Celery Glow. It's like 99% celery juice. It only has um, a teeny bit of, of lime juice in it, just, just like a touch of it. And it's only 35 calories, I think 978 milligrams of potassium. So compared to a banana, it's three times the potassium, a third the calories, you know, which is which is great. And then I like, if I, you have a celery juice, you have an avocado, which you'll get like another 900 milligrams of potassium. You got half your potassium for the day right there. And then you'll pick the rest up from just the foods like the salmon and salmon's high potassium too. And the other foods you're eating, you're eating some greens and some vegetables and stuff, you know, which is great. That's it. All right, does it get any other questions? I I, I guess um, it's interesting. Let's see what we got on Starbucks. Oh, Starbucks. Well, you know, yeah, they don't make them fresh at Starbucks, but if you look you know, under the counter in Starbucks, you're going to see the Evolutions brand. And the problem is with the Evolutions brand is there's only a few good ones. Like there are three There are three that I, I would buy. One is the Celery Glow. The other one's called Green Devotion. You can see Green Devotion, all it is is 100% greens it's going to have like spinach kale you know um celery cucumber and once again they always put a touch of like lemon or lime in it but that instead of being 35 calories green devotion jumps up to like 50 calories like 15 more calories but the potassium is even higher it's like 1100 milligrams of potassium that's another one i buy my wife buys that too that's what she drinks almost every single day then the third one they have that's a good one is called essential greens and for some reason, I always look at the labels. Instead of going 50 calories, that one jumps to 70 calories. It's a slightly, slight bit sweeter. I think they probably just put in more lemon juice to make it more palatable for some people. And the potassium, once again, is like 1,100 milligrams. But don't buy them at, at Starbucks. You're going to pay the most. I buy them always. At, I don't know if there's a Whole Foods near you. I buy them at Whole Foods. They used to always be on sale two for $7 because they normally sell for four ninety nine. And that was doing that for like two, three years. As of like a couple of weeks ago, now they're on sale two for eight. I don't know if it's a supply chain with this whole uh, COVID thing or whatever, but now they're two for eight, but it's still a great deal. I love them. But like 90% of these like vegetable in, in, you know, drinks, when you look at them, it's, and even the Evolution one, you gotta be so careful because they're mostly fruit juice to make them taste sweet and make them taste good. That's why I'm not a big fan of smoothies and things like that. You have to look, when you're doing these drinks, you have to go with like 99% vegetable. Like you want that ratio. You want it to be like 30, 40, 50 calories, high in potassium, like no sugar. But most of these ones, you grab anything that looks has that's colorful, like yellow or red, or it's all, it's all juice. It's like drinking orange juice, so it's not good. It's gonna spike your insulin, it's gonna be loaded with fructose. The worst sugar you can possibly eat is fructose goes right to the liver to be processed. Leads to fatty liver and metabolic, you know, all the horrible stuff is fructose. So you gotta be careful. You know, stick to like those real green ones or you can have them fresh made. I find it just so expensive. Like there's a um, health food store right near my gym. It's called Mrs. Greens. I used to go there every day and get my green drinks. But yeah, I'm spending like $9, $10 for a green drink. And um, sometimes they were even inconsistent, I felt, in the quality of how they made them. I think these evolution ones are some of the some of the best ones. There's something cool. I think there's a couple of other good brands similar to 
evolutions but i find that's the one that's the most affordable and just consistently always good Oh, that's great. I have a whole video. Yeah, check it out. I mean, wait till they're on sale. When they're on sale, pile up. Another thing I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little neurotic about, always check the dates. I'm always like going to the back, you know, pulling. Like I just bought, a, they were on sale yesterday, you know, two for eight. And the ones that were front, in the front, were like good till December, you know, like 20th. I went to the back, deep in the back, and I found one for like in January, fresh date already. So try to do that as well too. I, I think fresher obviously is always better. Okay. Not to, let's see what jeans got here. Okay, are you doing sixteen native minutes every day? Yeah, you know that's what I know. I've been doing lately. Lately, what I've doing is like I talked about, and I've been doing this now for like over a week. I, I sometimes I lose track. I say it's almost two weeks now. I've been doing eighteen six mostly. Like I haven't eaten yet today. You know, probably right after this. What do we got? One o'clock. I'm probably gonna break my fast around two. I didn't do my walk yet today. I'm also gonna do like a nice, nice. It's pretty. It's pretty nice in New York today. It's cold, but it's like it's like blazing sun. So I'm gonna do a nice 90 minute, two hour walk today. I've been doing mostly 18-6 combination of two mad and three mad, meaning that when I do, whenever I do my resistance training, I always like to take in more calories and like up my protein a little bit for that day. So, but on the days like a day like today, when I'm just doing like long easy cardio, or I've been doing um, hit. Like I lately been doing high intensity like hit type training but only like 20 minutes and then I train my core doing my app type work and all those like Stu McGill type stuffs and I, and I really focus on mobility movement I do that one day and then I still always walk them and I may even like early in the morning or later in the evening I may do like a 30 minute walk as well just easy those are the days where I do too mad because I feel like I'm just not burning too many calories and I'm not as concerned about the protein synthesis but then on the days when I do my resistance training which I've been doing three and three now I um I always do like an extra meal. And what I mean by an extra meal, it could just be like what I'm talking about. It could just mean that celery juice with two scoops of collagen protein powder and one scoop of um, of whey protein. And I may even put a tablespoon of like fish oil in there too. And I may do that like post-workout. That might be my three mad, my third meal. So I like to just up my calories on the days that I'm doing my resistance training. And I've been doing that. I'm gonna stick with that for a while until maybe the Christmas um, holiday season. But like I said, Christmas day, Christmas Eve, I'm gonna eat whatever I want. But I'll just cut back probably like a few days before to play it safe. Let's see. I have to invest in a good juicer. Yeah, you know, it's funny. One of my wife's friends just asked about a juicer. I did a video. It's kind of old. If you, I think I didn't manufacture it. I, t I sent it to my video. If you go to my channel, you put in like my cola juicer or juicing. And you'll see, like I'm not selling it just right now. You'll, you'll see the juicer that I have. It's a really good quality one. It was a few hundred bucks. Like the best ones, but they're crazy expensive. All those cold pressed juices, like how they make these, like that evolution, that's cold pressed. They actually squeeze the uh, juice. Some people feel that when you cold press it, like just the juicing, the centrifuge juicing kind of like damages and like burns the juice and you lose some of the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. I don't know about that. But I think once you start spending, unfortunately, you start spending it on 300, at that kind of a price point, you really get a pretty good, pretty good juicer but I have to say you, you probably know Kyle it gets messy it's just I find that the cost of buying the vegetables and then buying the juicer and all the cleanup that if you can get that evolution brand like two for eight you're way ahead you know but it is fun to have a juicer in the house I, I bought some cheap ones years ago like you know a QVC one you pay like $89 for one and then I bought this good one for about 300 and it does work well but it is a lot it's messy and it's a lot of work and you're really cleaning it out, and then you're putting, you know, in the dishwasher. It, it's it's a project for sure. So I don't know if I would if I would buy a juicer and go that way, unless you just it's fun and you like it. And if you cook, like for example, if you're juicing carrots, and then you know, like the fiber, everything shoots out, and then you're gonna take that and like make something with it. You know, then I think juicing does make sense. You're making carrot cake for the kids or something like that for a holiday, and you want then it does make sense. Or maybe you're really into cooking and you you want juicer for that. But juicing is a lot of work, even though I think it's great. Okay. All right. So we made the hour and five minutes. I hate to go. I hate to go less than an hour. So any other questions? And and, and if, if you have time today, take a walk too. Like I'm gonna de definitely take a walk after this. All right. So I'm gonna hit the road. I really appreciate you. Um. Showing up to these live streams, I love it. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna make this like a regular thing now. Every Sunday. Um, last time I did 5:15. This is midday 12. If you want, you know, if you can, you know, leave a comment. Let me know um, what time like works for you. But I think this Sunday time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stick with do a live stream. I didn't do 
any video for the YouTube channel this week. I think I did one short video talking about um, how being in ketosis doesn't guarantee that you're gonna burn body fat. It doesn't mean that you are burning body fat, but you can be eating too much fat and, and putting on weight. I wanted to do a video about that too. Uh, thanks. But um, let me know if this times for you, and and, um, and you know, you know, share, share, you know, share this video with anyone you think would be helpful. And I appreciate the support with the channel and everyone showing up all the time. But great information. Oh, thanks, Kyle. I really appreciate it. Thanks everyone for showing up. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care. Thanks for showing up. Bye bye.